Slave Jesu Christu. Glory to Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn today is At the Most Holy Cross, mm. Christu Toyemu. At the most holy cross of our Savior, we bow in honor and sing our praise. We praise your suffering and all your torments, for it was by them you saved us all. We praise your suffering and all your torments, for it was by them you saved us all. At the most holy cross of our Savior, now and forever we bow our heads in your great mercy. Such great love. In your great mercy, who poured out your life, saving all sinners with such great love. Prestut foiem, whose passe blood ego, o clonches lavu, slad I am. Trust for you, slave, him who shall him who him who keeps Trust for you, slave, him who shall him who him who keeps Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, you are our present, filling all things, treasure, blessings, giver of life, come and dwell within us, cleanse us of all stain, save our souls, O gracious one. Glory to God in the highest, people on earth, peace and goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, peace and goodwill. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth to declare your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace from an eye and for salvation our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the all with for the stability of the holy church of God, to the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our holy father Francis Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our most reverend metropolitan meet, for our Bishop Kurt, for the venerable presbyter, the diacrat in Christ, and on the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government, for all service our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, for the faithful in King Tem, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Por favor, I will wait here for an abundance of the fruits of the earth for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> for those who travel by sea and alive for the sake, the suffering, the captain, for thy salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from affliction, breath and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, and mercy on us, and preserve us, O oh God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady of Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. Mighty beyond description, glorious about all understanding, mercy without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look in compassion on us in the Holy Church of Master, and show us in those who pray with us the riches of your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is all glory, honor, and worship, now and ever and forever. For God save your people, bless your inheritance, preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those open in your house, glorify them in return with their power. Do not forsake us and place our hope in you. Yours is the might, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. You promise grant the petitions of truth reunited together in your name. You enable us to offer these prayers and sing out your voice. And hear their question and service will benefit them in this knowledge, truth, and present time. Granting like and truth to come to you, Christ our God, and good to you. Love us all, we give glory to you with eternal Father. Your holy good life, free spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen.
Wisdom, be attentive. God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. We bow to your cross, O Glorify your holy resurrection. Be to all wisdom, be attentive. Savior, keep all Savior. 
to the Hebrews. Brethren, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our profession of faith. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is tempted in every way that we are, yet never sinned. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and favor and to find help in time of need. Every high priest is taken from among men and made the representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with erring sinners, for he himself is beset by weakness and so must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. One does not take this honor on his own initiative, but only when called by God as Aaron was. Even Christ did not glorify himself with the office of high priest. He received it from the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Just as he says, in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Peace to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. Stand to listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Let us be attentive. I doctrine.
The Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes with the holy angels in his Father's glory. He also said to them, I assure you, among those standing here, there are some who will not taste death until they see the reign of God established in power. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to uh, today we celebrate the Sunday of the veneration of the Holy Cross. That's the Sunday when Father John was our guest today, and myself, we was ordained as a priest. So we are celebrating together, and I'm grateful that Father uh, said, let's celebrate together, because you was ordained on the Sunday of the veneration of the Holy Cross, and I. Just the difference that Father John is, as a priest, 56 years. I need two years more for all my life to arrive that, to that age, and I have 27. And I am grateful and thankful to Father John that he will share his reflection today with us. You're welcome, Father. Thank you. Slava Jesus Christo. Glory to Jesus Christ. And good morning. It's always good to be here. You know, a special place. And part of my priesthood is here, and I always fondly and deliberately love to just come here and be here. Time of Lent. Holy time. Challenging time. The great fast is often looked at as a journey. You know, when you're on a journey, you're not at home. And you're kind of like shaken up a little bit. And you're going somewhere. You have some place to go. That's very important. But for us, we see ourselves on a pilgrimage. We're going to a holy place. We're going to Jerusalem. We're going to the passion, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, to the gift of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church, the sharing in the life and sacrifice of Jesus, and our redemption. For our church is a journey from Adam and Eve, from creation, through the Old Testament of God's promises and covenants with the Jews, to the fulfillment in Jesus Christ by his life, death, resurrection, giving of the Holy Spirit, commissioning of the apostles to preach this covenant and revelation to the whole world. And our church calls us through the Lenten calendar, the calendar of Lent, to make this pilgrimage. But I want to say much more. On Sunday before Lent, we remember Adam and Eve. So we be start, where do we start at? At the very, very, very beginning. And so for us, this journey is the journey of all humanity and ends with the Sunday of the last judgment of all humanity. When is that? The Sunday before the Sunday of Adam and Eve. So the second Sunday before uh, Lent is at the judgment where we have to give an account for our lives and then we start all over again with, with Adam and Eve when Jesus, we, and the judgment is when Jesus will come with glory to sh judge all humanity. Let's go quickly through as possible through its journey so we can get a glimpse of, of all the connections that are there. It's like, you know, everything's together. We kind of hear everything piecemeal. You know, we have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and we never put it all together. So, so far, we had the Sunday of last judgment, you know, before Lent started, 
And at the very beginning of Lent, this Sunday uh, of Adam and Eve, when it all starts over again. And we start with the reading of the first book of the Bible. Creation, Adam and Eve, the garden, the fall, God's first promise of a savior. God gave Adam and Eve everything, all creation. They were given paradise, pure gift, unearned gift, God's gift. They walked with God. They, did, they had this closeness to God. God was with them. They felt totally, completely at ease with God. What's the result of sin? They felt naked. They were ashamed. They were given paradise, pure gift, unearned gift, God's gift. They walked with God, but they wouldn't, didn't acknowledge God's sovereignty and the, the gift, the giver. He's the lover. We're the beloved. They couldn't they couldn't partake of the tree of good and evil. And guess who won? The devil won. The tempter won. He wrapped the bait in such sweet words, they just had to try it. You're going to be just like God. And you're going to know good and evil. And they did. And God's plan was thwarted. God's creation was defiled. God's sovereignty was thwarted and denied. We know the rest of the story, and we live that story every day in our lives, and we see it all around us. Evil, sin reigning, death, ignorance, fear, terror, deception, intrigue, all those things that are evil that took over and that always constantly come back and attack us. God would win us back he would win back this world, renew his creation, renew humanity. And that's the Bible story. And that's our witness to the world. The first week tells us how do we go through this journey of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Jesus calls us to follow him on the journey. During the week, the prayers describe the deeper layers of fasting. O oh, faithful, let us also fast in spirit. Let us loosen every bond of injustice. Let us tear apart the strong chains of violence. Let us rip up all unjust assertions. Let us give bread to the hungry and welcome the poor and homeless so that we may receive Christ our God and his great mercy. The second Sunday, we're called to make room and walk with and help together carry those who are carrying heavy burdens make room for everyone for forgiveness and healing. The process helps us break the chains and bring people back to living community and give back with joy. The third week, which is the one we're celebrating now, the third Sunday of Lent, but the week before, it focuses on our total restoration and forgiveness that will give us the desire, the strength, the energy to keep heading to the goal of our pilgrimage and journey. In this third week of the fast, O Lord, watch over those who are fasting. Make us worthy to persevere in the observance of your commandments so that in all purity we may contemplate and celebrate your glorious resurrection. In the Vespers for this Thursday, last Thursday, we prayed, as we complete the third week of this holy fast, O Christ, and word of God, enable us to contemplate the wood of your life-giving cross, to bow before it, to sing worthily and glorify your power, to exalt your passion, and in all purity to see your glorious and holy resurrection, the mystical Passover by which Adam is returned to paradise. That's the whole turnaround. The focus is no longer on us. The focus is on Jesus and walking with Jesus to Jerusalem and finding the new Jerusalem. And Jesus on this Sunday in a teaching begins to teach his apostles and us that the Son of Man must suffer many things. 
He must be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, be killed, and after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. That's what Mark says. This week ends with the, has ended with the veneration of the Holy Cross. And we pray, in days of old, the enemy stripped me of paradise, took paradise away from me, giving me the fruit of the tree of life to eat. He introduced me to death. And now the tree of the cross is set upon the earth. It offers us mortals the garment of life. And the whole world is filled with joy, seeing the cross raised up. And we cry out to our Lord with one voice, your temple is filled with your glory. Just like the temple in Jerusalem. When Isaiah was in the temple and he saw the glory, he just went, wow. The fourth week makes us change from our cleansing and repentance and brings us to look for more and more on the entering Jerusalem with Jesus and his disciples. On the fourth Sunday, next Sunday, Jesus speaks again. He's going to Jerusalem. He's teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man will be delivered to the hands of men. They will kill him. And when he's killed, after three days, he will rise. And Peter says, Lord, don't go there. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go down to Hawaii. <laughs> let's go to Miami. Lord, let's go where it's warm and nice, you know. And Jesus says, no, no, guy. You got it all mixed up. We're going. Because why? It's our salvation. And he teaches again and again. On the fifth Sunday... They're heading toward Jerusalem. They're getting closer and closer. You know how it is when you're going somewhere and you say, oh, 10 miles, 5 miles, 3 miles, and the kids in the car say, Daddy, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? You know, we'll get there sometime. <laughs> you know, no, no, we're closer and closer and closer. So next, on the fifth Sunday, we're heading toward Jerusalem. He again, but Jesus is walking in front of him. He's not in the back hiding out. He's saying, come on, guys, let's go. Walking in front as Jesus is with us on this journey to the great, of the great fast. He's telling us what will happen. He's willingly going, and he calls us to go with him. Behold, the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes. They will condemn him to death, deliver him to the Gentiles. They will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and kill him. Three days he will rise. When you say something three times, what's it mean? Total and complete. Jesus is giving himself totally, completely, and freely to, for us. That's what, the, and the great Lent ends at the end of the fifth, at the end of the sixth week. It ends with Vespers when we come to the outskirts of Jerusalem. And then Jesus takes us to Bethany where Lazarus has died. And on Lazarus Saturday, he raises him from the dead after five days. He already smells. From Bethany, you can see the walls of Jerusalem. We're there. We're at the gate. That's the first event beginning Holy Week. From there, we know the events of Palm Sunday, the days of Holy Week, the Holy Thursday, the first Eucharist. This is my body, my blood shed for you. That's the sacrament that we celebrate over and over again. Good Friday and the crucifixion. Holy Saturday, the entrance into Hades, and Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection. The holy time ends with ascension and Pentecost when Jesus gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit to transform us, to give us the life of God in us, and restore us as God's children to encounter death, receive the Holy Spirit, and then the church takes us back again to Galilee, to the calling of the apostles, back to Jesus' public ministry, so we see it over and over again and realize all of this is for us and for our salvation. And then the liturgical year kind of ends again at the second coming of Christ. And we repeat it. Why do we repeat things? So we go deeper every year to understand it more completely. Every week, every Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection and all the events of our salvation. We're called to approach with fear of God, with faith to receive the Holy Eucharist. The whole life of the church is for us and through Jesus Christ, 
for the restoration of the human race, divinized, made holy, and our worthy reception of Holy Communion. Our bishop wants us to restore our faith and, our, and depth of our Holy Eucharist. So we ask you, please, this Lent, place the divine liturgy and the Holy Eucharist in the middle of our faith and worship. It connects us and transforms us, fills us with new life. May we hunger for eternal life and the kingdom of God that is in our midst and walk with God and walk with faith. And we're already tasting God's kingdom. And on Easter we sing, Shine, O oh shine, new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Shine, shine, shine. All of us are people of new Jerusalem because we're enlightened and filled with God's spirit. May we truly walk with God and be people of God. God bless you. Let us all say with our whole soul, with our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. O Lord Almighty, God of our fathers, we pray you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Can we pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Kurt, for, the mo for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Again, we pray to you, O Lord our God, Hear our supplication, and through your grace, have mercy on your servant, Father Taras, and all the members of our parish and our families and loved ones. Grant all our petitions, pardon all of our voluntary and voluntary sins, accept our supplications and charitable deeds before the throne of your majesty, safeguard us from every visible and invisible enemy, from every misfortune, distress, and affliction. Spare us from illness and grant us health and long life. Let us all say, Lord, hear and have mercy. Loving Lord, look down with merciful eyes upon your servants and have mercy that, and hear our supplication, for we have offered up with faith. For you yourself said, believe that you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer, it will be given yours. You also said, ask, you will receive. Because of this, we, although unworthy as we are, trust in your mercy. <clears throat> We ask that you be merciful to your servants, fulfill our good desires, keep us in peace, tranquility and health, grant long life. Let us all say, O oh Lord, hear and graciously have mercy.
Again, we pray for the people here present who wait your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy. Our merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, pray union and have mercy. Repose of the soul departed, sir, don't got Monica that her every transgression voluntary and voluntary be forgiven. Where they just Our sins. Let us beseech Christ, the immortal King and our God. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God of spirits and of flesh, who trample that and brought the power of the devil, granted life to your world. Now grant rest of the soul departed servant, Monica, in a place of light, joy, and peace, where there is no pain, sorrow, nor mourning, as a good and loving God forgive her sin committed by her, in word, deed, or thought, since there is no one who lady does not send you alone or without sin, your justice, eternal justice, and your word is true. For you, O Christ, our God, the direction, the life, the repose of your departed servant, Monica, and we give glory to you with your eternal Father, and your all holy good in life, creating spirit, now and ever and forever.
pray for me, brother and sister, and sinner, that God have mercy on me and save me. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Kirk, the entire priestly diaconal monastic orders, our civil authorities, those in the service of our country, the noble and ever-memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church, and all you Christians of the true faith. May the Lord God remember you in his kingdom always, now and ever, and forever. precious gifts place it before us let us pray to the Lord Lord God you created us you brought us into this life you have shown us the ways to salvation you have bestowed on us the revelation of the heavenly mysteries you yourself have appointed us to the service by the power of the Holy Spirit therefore O Lord be pleased to make us servants of your new covenant, ministers of your holy mysteries. According to your abundant mercy, receive us as we draw near your holy altar, that we may be worthy to offer you this spiritual and bloody sacrifice for our sins and for the people's failings. Receive it as a fragrant aroma upon your holy, heavenly, and mystical altar, and send down upon us in return the grace of your Holy Spirit. Look upon us, O God, and bestow this our worship and accept it as you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the first fruits of Abraham, the priesthood of Moses and Aaron, the priest offerings of Samuel, just as you accepted this true worship from the hands of your apostles, O Lord, in your goodness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners. May we who have been made worthy to minister without blame at your holy altar obtain the reward of faithful and wise stewards on the fearsome day of your just retribution. Grant this through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us love one another that it one might we may profess. In wisdom, let us be attentive.
Let us stand the right, let us stand in all, let us be attentive to offer the holy and offer right in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and Father, and communion in the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. sinners also cry out with these blessed powers, a loving and kind master, and say, holy are you and truly all holy, immeasurable is the majesty of your holiness, you are revered. Eternal being, master, Lord, God, O Father almighty and adorable, it is truly proper and just and befitting the magnificence of your holiness to praise you, to sing to you, to bless you, to worship you, to thank you, to glorify you, the only true God, and to offer you this, our spiritual worship, with contrite heart and humble spirit. For you have granted us the knowledge of your truth. Who is able to proclaim your might or make known all your praises, or to recount all your mighty deeds in every age? Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, both visible and invisible, enthroned in glory, yet phantoming the depths, eternal, invisible, incomprehensible, boundless and changeless, Father of our great God, Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, you reveal through him who is our hope, the image of your goodness and the seal bearing your likeness. He is the living word, true God, eternal wisdom, life, sanctification, power, and true light, through whom the Holy Spirit has been revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of filial adoption, the pledge of our future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life-creating power, the wellspring of sanctification, through whom every rational and intelligent creature is empowered to worship you and offer you an unending hymn of praise, for all creation serves you, angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, virtues, powers, the many-eyed cherubim praise you. You are surrounded by the six-winged seraphim, two wings cover their face, to their feet, with two they fly. They call with one another to, with never-ending and never-silent hymns of praise, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn.
we sinners also cry out with these blessed powers, a loving and kind master, and say, truly, holy are you and truly all holy, immeasurable the majesty of your holiness. You're revered in all your works, with the, for with righteousness, just judgment, you have ordered all things for us. Taking clay from the earth, you formed man. You honored him with your own image, O God. You placed him in the delightful paradise, promised him immortal life and the enjoyment of eternal blessings to the observance of your commandments. But man disobeyed you, the true God who created him. He was led astray by the serpent by, and by his own transgressions was subjected to death. In your righteous judgment, O God, you banished him from paradise into this world you returned him to the earth from which he had been taken. You provided for him the salvation of rebirth in your Christ. For you did not turn away from your creature forever, O good one, nor forget your, the work of your hands. Rather, you intervened with various ways because of your merciful, loving kindness. You sent prophets and performed mighty deeds through your holy ones, you, you have pleased, who have pleased you in every generation. You spoke to us through the mouth of your servants, the prophets, who foretold the salvation which was to come. You gave the law as an aid. You appointed angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your own Son, the very one through whom you created all the ages. Although he is the reflection of your glory and the express image of your person, sustaining all things by his powerful word, he did not deem equality with you, God and Father, something to be grasped. Rather, while remaining everlasting God, he appeared on earth and lived among men. And becoming incarnate from the Holy Spirit, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, conforming himself to the lowliness of our body, that he might conform us to the image of his glory. For since through a man sin entered the world, and through sin death, so it pleased your only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of your, uh, your bosom, God and Father, to be born of a woman, the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, to be born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who are dead in Adam might be brought to life in him, your Christ. Living in this world, he gave us precepts for salvation turned us away from the deceit of idols. He brought us to know you, true God and Father. He purchased us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, cleansing us with water and sanctifying us with the Holy Spirit. He surrendered himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, sold into slavery under sin, descending by the cross into Hades, to fulfill all things in himself. He freed us from death's despair and rose on the third day, preparing the way for the resurrection of all flesh from the dead. Since corruption could not keep the author of life in its clutches, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence over all. Ascending into heaven, he has taken his seat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and will come to reward everyone according to his works. He left us these memorials of his saving passion, which we have prepared according to his command for when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable, and life-creating death. On the night when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure hands and presenting it to you, God and Father, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you for the for remission of sins. Likewise, taking the chalice, the fruit of the vine, he mixed it, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection. Therefore, O Master, we also remember his saving passion, the life-creating cross, the three-day burial, the resurrection from the dead, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at your right hand, God and Father, and his glorious and fearsome second coming. Offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. Holy Master, since you have allowed us sinners and unworthy servants to minister at your holy altar, not because of our righteousness, for you have done nothing good on earth, but because of your mercy and compassion so richly poured out upon us, we have the courage to approach your holy altar. As we offer you the holy body and blood of your Christ in this form, we pray you, we beseech you, O Holy of Holies, to your kind favor that your Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon these gifts offered and bless, sanctify, and show this bread to be truly the precious body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and this chalice to be truly the precious blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the life of the world. So that all of us who share this one bread and chalice may be united with one another in the communion of the one Holy Spirit and that none of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ for judgment or condemnation. Rather, may we obtain mercy and grace together with all the saints who have pleased you since time began, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, with every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever virgin Mary.
Among the first, the Lord, remember our Holy Father, <coughs> Francis Pope of Rome, our Most Reverend Metropolitan William, our Holy Bishop Kurt, preserved for your Holy Churches in peace, safety, honor, and health for many years, and they faithfully impart the word of your truth. Remember, Lord, the entire episcopate of true believers who faithfully impart the word of your truth. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring an end to the schism in the churches, extinguish the raging of nations, quickly put down the absurges of heresy, accept us all into your kingdom, showing us to be children of light and of the day. Grant us your peace and love, O Lord our God, for you have given us everything, and grant that we, with one voice and one heart, may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all these saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. <coughs> For the precious gifts of it, it consecrated our God, who loves us all, may receive them in his holy and very mystical altar as an aroma of of fragrance and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, That we be delivered from all affliction, right and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, <coughs> have mercy. That uh, this whole day be perfect, holy, peace without sin. Let us beseech the Lord. <coughs> For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, and guard in all souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the pardon and remission of sins and offenses, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For what is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O for that we may spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. <coughs> for a Christian, fellow son, ashamed, peaceful in our life, and for a good account before the feast of judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Asking for unity in the faith and for communion on the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. O oh God, God of our salvation, teach us to give you worthy thanks for the bounties you have bestowed and continue to bestow on us as you have accepted these gifts. O oh God, purify us from every defilement of flesh and spirit Teach us to grow in faith, perfect in holiness through fear of you, so that pure testimony of our conscience, we may receive a portion of your holy gifts and be united to the holy body and blood of your Christ. Receive them worthily. May we have Christ living in our hearts and become temples of your Holy Spirit. Especially, O oh God, let none of us become guilty or, or weakened in soul or body by partaking of these awesome mysteries and heavenly mysteries of yours unworthily. Rather grant, O Lord, that even until our last breath, we may worthily receive a portion of your holy gifts as a provision for the journey to eternal life and for an acceptable defense before the fearsome judgment seat of your Christ. Then together with all the saints who have pleased you since time began, May we become partakers of eternal blessings which you have prepared for those who love you, O Lord, and make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven, and say...
die, neither kingdom in the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Bow your heads to the Lord. Master, Lord, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, bless, sanctify, guard, confirm, and strengthen those who have <clears throat> bow their heads to you, turn them away from every evil deed, equip them for every good work, and make them worthy to partake of this, your most pure and light-creating mysteries without condemnation for the remission of their sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, through the grace, the mercies, and the loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your holy, good, and light-creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, holy gifts to holy people. Yeah. Broken is true in this land of God, broken not white air, and sin sanctifying. Those who partake thereof, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, precious holy body, and blood of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is given to be
now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us really thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank you, Lord our God, for our sharing in your holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly mysteries, which you have given us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. You, O Master of all, Grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of your Christ may bring about in us a faith that cannot be confounded, 
a love that does not pretend, a wisdom that overflows, the healing of our souls and bodies, the defeat of every enemy, the full observance of your commandments, and an acceptable defense before the fearsome judgment seat of your Christ. For you are sanctification, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Lord, you are more powerful than all those who live on high, and you care for those who are humble by your own will. <clears throat> you went up upon the cross and stretched out your hands, desiring to save all people and to bring them to knowledge of the truth by your honorable ascent, you fulfilled all humility and were revealed to the nations the great power of the Heavenly Father, the Most High and Unseen God. By the cross you reveal our exaltation from the ancient fall of which we were condemned, the first miserable fall. Therefore we pray you, Master, lover of mankind, and our God, look upon us, your sinful and unworthy servants, who today celebrate with love the exaltation of your venerable cross, and who offer worthy honor and worship. Do not turn from our prayers, O King of heaven and earth, and keep our nation and all nations in peace and tranquility. Watch over your church and guide our hearts and all our thoughts, that we may be worthy of eternal exaltation. For by your venerable death on the cross, you wish it to raise up our hearts from worldly corruption and to lead them into your heavenly kingdom. For it is you who have mercy and save us. And to you we return glory together with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. of the Lord be upon you through his grace and loving kindness always, now and ever and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ our God, our hope. Glory to you. Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, luscious apostles, of our holy father, Basil the great, Archbishop Caesarea in Cappadocia, of the holy patroness of this church, St. Anne, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Priest is ordained to serve, and I'm happy and blessed that I've been able to serve for 56 years, and I'm happy that three of those years, two and a half of those years, have been here at St. Anne's. I thank you and for your prayers, for your, all of your support over those years, and it's always a joy to be here. One of the prayers in Psalms, it says, God delights in you. You know how you light up when you see your grandson or granddaughter? And you say, oh, you know, it's just pure joy. God delights in us, pure joy. That's wonderful how God looks at us. And I, today I want to say that I'm going to thank Father Taras. His first 
pastoral service as a priest was with me in St. Thomas in Rahway, New Jersey, uh, 29 years ago. So it's kind of a nice visit to be with him on an anniversary that we share together, not in ages and time and the days, or, you know, but on the third Sunday of Lent. May God grant to Father Taras, to all the people of St. Anne's, peace, health, and happiness for many and blessed years. Blessed repose, grant all original rest to your departed servant, Monica, and remember her forever. Usually, by our tradition, we venerate this Sunday in Holy Week, the Holy Cross, and we are coming to kiss it. And uh, but now, in this <clears throat> circumstance, I invite you to venerate in your heart, in your thoughts, and in your mind, and doing like Italians, you know, ciao Gesù, and send the spiritual kiss and venerate in your heart. And be grateful for this gift that our Lord gave his life for our salvation. For the following week, we have the program. Tomorrow, we have funeral. I forget to tell at the morning's liturgy, but I hope they can read it because they receive by electronic way. And it's just written coming outside. Uh, we have a funeral for Nancy. Uh, 10 o'clock viewing or visitation in church and 11 is liturgy and funeral and after in cemetery uh, we will finish the, the burying the, the, the body. Tuesday at the evening 6 p.m. we will have Moleben was usually Monday the morning but we put now at the evening Wednesday, pre-sanctified liturgy, 6 p.m. Thursday, please invite your friends, everybody who knows and you don't know. We'll have three days spiritual retreat. I invite the priest, Gregory Lozinski, young priest who was the pastor in Bayonne in Jersey City. Now he is in Connecticut and he is... Uh, ready to offer his reflection and to enrich us with his uh, preaching and being with us in, in his prayers. He will come with his family. So Thursday, 6 o'clock, we start with the Moleven to the Jesus Love Mankind and after reflection and 7 o'clock we will do like usually uh, in the last week or holy week in Wednesday, the anointing of the sick, that sacrament with the prayers, with the readings and the, the holy gospels. 
so we will do this uh, Thursday. We start 7 p.m. Everybody can participate with the faith, asking God for good health. I think we need, especially in this not easy period and time. Friday, we will continue with the uh, pre-sanctified liturgy, 7 p.m. And Saturday, we will finish with the liturgy in the morning, 8.30. And after the gospel, the last reflection of Father Gregory, and, and the end with the Panakeda for all the souls, that will be the last Saturday in this great land. You see, it's already, we just started, it will be already the, the fourth Sunday. Go like this. That's how our life is going like this. So don't be lazy. Throw the occasion, work for salvation. God made everything for us. We just need from our side not to be lazy. Wake up, come and hey, if I need to confess, I am confessing. You know what to do. Father, Father, come here. I am here for you. And I invite one other, three additional priests. So we'll have confession Thursday starting from 6 all the time. Somebody will be for your disposition. You can invite many, many people who wants, even who don't want, you just push them to say, hey, don't be lazy. Look, tempus volant, time is flying. Take care of your future eternal life. Don't be lazy. Don't be like, hey, oh, I should make maybe next time. We don't know if you will have next time. Through the time, be conscient and fight for your future help, happiness. God bless you all. Thank you, Father John, for coming and sharing with us today your reflection. Congratulations to you also with uh, your ordination. 56 years as a priest. I need two years more for all my life to have 56. I have only 27, but I am grateful. I am grateful that... Um, it's happened in my life that I know you, and as a priest, you are a good example for me, and not just for me, for you was in the seminary, great support, and then good example for many of young who was looking to serve God and people. Grant the Lord to your servant, Father John, and all our parishioners, peace and happiness for many blessed years. off.